Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We're back at this set because, my gosh, I have a lot of stuff I need to read to you guys. We have so much big news today. We have an update on the Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope release date. We have an update on a brand new game coming to Switch that we kind of knew through an ESRB rating but wasn't officially announced until today. We have a new game showcase announced that's going to be actually showing off likely a ton of games coming to Nintendo Switch based on the, uh, <laughs> the developer's previous repertoire with Switch. Uh, we have Nintendo themselves talking about the Nintendo Switch online service and future plans and how well it's doing at the moment. We have an update on Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, and by the way, something to do with Fall Guys. So, we have a big jam-packed episode for you guys. Uh, if this is the first time you've ever been to Nintendo Prime, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel, especially if you enjoy Nintendo news, discussion, debate, uh, entertainment, all of that. I really would appreciate it. We also have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. If you would like to enter for that, head to the pinned comment or click the link down in the description. Uh, that is a kickoff giveaway for our Prime Giving <laughs> Prime Giving Prime Gaming Fest, where we're going to be giving away thousands of dollars worth of giveaway stuff. I, I more and more of the piles growing every day. It's going to be amazing. Uh, more details on that to come. We're actually starting to schedule out our first day. Uh, it's going to be a six-day event happening June 9th through June 14th. But again, more details on that to come as we get closer to the event. That being said, let's jump right into the news. And the first piece of news we have deals with Alan Wake Remastered. So this game actually came back out in 2010 for like all the platforms at the time. And there was an originally an ESRB rating that leaked for the game for Nintendo Switch. So we sort of knew this game was coming eventually. And today it was officially confirmed and announced for Nintendo Switch. It will be an eShop only release later this year. The date has not been unveiled yet. Uh, but what's neat about this is you might think eShop only. Oh no, guys. This is another cloud game. This is another control situation. This is another Kingdom Hearts situation. <sighs> This isn't what we want. This is Hitman 3 all over again, except it's not. The game will be running natively on Switch. So, yeah, they're choosing not to go with the physical version because they don't think it'll sell enough, but they do think it's worthwhile bringing it over. It is a native port, uh, and that is really, really good news for us Switch owners. Anytime we can get a really good third-party game, and Alan Wake is a really good game. The remastered version's slightly better, and hey, we're getting it on Switch. It's going to be portable now. That's really cool. A lot of fun. Thank you so much to the developers for actually deciding to bring it over. I know it's an older game, but hey, you know what? I want every game on Switch, so this is just another feather in the Switch's third-party cap. Next up, we have an update on Mario Plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, plus some other games because Ubisoft had their latest financial briefing as well. And inside their financial report, they stated the following. For 2022-2023, we look to return to significant top-line growth. That's their current fiscal year. It will be mostly driven by a diverse lineup of premium games, including Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, trademark, Mario Plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, Skull and Bones, man, that game is still coming, huh? As well as other exciting titles. This growth will also benefit us from our free-to-play releases, especially those based on our biggest IPs, which they are planning a number of free-to-play releases. They might even be looking to get into Battle Royale at some point here. Ubisoft is going to do what Ubisoft does, but what's nice about this is when they talk about 2022-2023, they're actually just talking about this was in context of their fiscal year, which also ends the same time as Nintendo does in March of 2023. So, yeah, sometime between now and then, Mario Bros. Rabbit Sparks of Hope is coming out. Remember, it was announced for 2022. When you hear by the end of this fiscal year, and that actually gives you a lot of hope the game is still coming here in 2022. And it's really the first time we've even heard about the game since it was talked about at E3 last year. I presume, by the way, we're about to hear a lot about this game at Summer Game Fest coming up next month. So can't wait for that. All right, next up, speaking of Summer Game Fest, this is actually a major um, developer doing a showcase event. So you could think of this like a direct or a presentation. Uh, but they're not doing it at Summer Game Fest. They're actually doing it this month next week so 505 games announced a showcase for may 17th at 8 a.m central time 
you know that we will be live reacting to that. In fact, maybe we might even have a little bit of a giveaway for that one. We'll see. Uh, but here is what they had to say. And by the way, 505 Games has had like five or six titles come out on Switch. So we definitely should pay attention to this as Nintendo owners. But here's what they said uh, talking about this event. Leading video game publisher 505 Games proudly announces the debut of its first ever digital product showcase. An hour-long glimpse into the upcoming products and a chance to get to know key developers behind each title a little more personally. Hosted by former MTV presenter Patrice, I, I might even attempt to pronounce that last name, the showcase will give gamers the latest insight into a range of upcoming titles that 505 is proud to publish, offering never-before-seen content, a brand new reveal from a cult developer, plus in-depth interviews with some of the development teams responsible. As 505 Games continues to grow, it is important we keep shouting about the amazing developers we're proud to work with and the brilliant games they make, said Neil Rath president of 505 games with our first ever showcase we're thrilled to present a handful of new games that we have a handful i feel is like three four or five games this is awesome and i can't wait we'll be live stream reacting to this developer interviews this sounds like this could be a pretty lengthy event maybe an hour long i have no idea i am thrilled i am pumped we will be live reacting again it kind of feels like nintendo kicked off the summer event of stuff even though we're technically not the summer yet with the indie showcase now we have 505 games june we already have xbox bethesda summer game fest tribeca festival pc gaming show future game show likely a nintendo direct as well Woo! it's getting exciting guys we're getting to that time of the year when all the major announcements come out so next up we have new details from the q a session during nintendo's latest financial briefing uh, where investors get an opportunity to ask Shintaro Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, uh, about various things happening in Nintendo. And they were asked about Nintendo Switch Online and how Nintendo Switch Online is doing, future plans. And here is basically the summary of what they said as translated by Video Game Chronicle. We'll link to their article because obviously they're responsible for this translation. And here's what they put. The total subscribers of Nintendo Switch Online has not been updated from the 32 million subscribers we disclosed last September but it is gradually increasing as the sales of the Nintendo Switch increases, uh, Shintura Furukawa said. Of course, there are customers who allow their subscribership to expire, and then they don't renew. So we believe it is important to continue releasing software that allows players to continue to enjoy not only online play, but also enhances their overhaul experience. We continue to expand our services and create new content for our customers throughout this year. It has been heavily speculated that both Game Boy consoles could be next to join Nintendo Switch's online classic games offering, with multiple sources claiming last year that Game Boy and Game Boy Color games were likely to be added really soon. During the financial call this week, Furukawa pointed to the new missions and rewards added to Switch Online in March as an example of how Nintendo has so far added value to the service, as well as the addition of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC for free. The president claimed these new additions were translating to increased subscribers in the United States. Furukawa claimed that most Switch Online users had upgraded to the expansion pack tier following its launch in October. The number of subscribers, this is a direct quote from Furukawa, the number of subscribers to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack is gradually increasing, as is the number of subscribers to Nintendo Switch Online, Furukawa claimed. By region, the subscription rate is particularly high in the United States. Immediately following the service launch, most people upgraded to Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack. Since the end of the year, we have launched many popular games for the Nintendo 64, as well as launched new DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Animal Crossing New Horizons. As a result, we are seeing an increase in new subscribers. Now, regarding whether additional content similar to the Mario Kart 8 DLC will be released through the Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, the exec said, we will continue to consider the convenience for our customers as well as how well it would tie in with the individual software. We will provide the best possible solution for each title. So what do we learn from this? The subscriber base hasn't really substantially grown from 32 million. It's still right around that number, maybe a little bit higher, but not enough to really say much about. But Nintendo is happy to see, especially in the United States, that pretty much everyone who subscribed to NSO in the United States upgraded to the expansion pack. I don't know how many millions that is for Nintendo. I'm assuming it's 10 to 15. Uh, so that, that's obviously really good news for them. You know, who knows with other regions. But yeah, it, it, it sounds like Nintendo sees that one thing that convinced people to, to, to really upgrade was putting these DLC packs 
in Nintendo Switch Online. So yeah, they're going to continue to expand. They're going to add more platforms, going to add more games. And I think they're going to add more DLC. I know you said you'll consider it on an individual software basis, but that's not outright saying, hey, we're not going to put any more DLC on this expansion pass. I definitely think that they are massively considering any first party owned DLC that's going to be coming out. They're going to really be considering whether or not it should be on the expansion pass or not. And, you know, we'll guess we'll find out whenever the next DLC is announced. I mean, we might get new DLC announced as soon as this summer for, for some game. I, I have no idea what game. It could be for Kirby for all we know. So it's going to be really fun to see what happens. But hey, Nintendo Switch Online seems at least to be a little bit healthy, although admittedly since September, technically the subscriber growth seems a little stagnant the fact they won't give updated numbers that that kind of feels like it's a little bit stagnant for nintendo that they're they're kind of losing subscribers and gaining subscribers at the same rate but the expansion pass stuff is really taking off for them uh and so we'll We'll see. They got to obviously find a way to convince more people to even get on NSO in the first place. Next up, we have an update on Monster Hunter Rise because we now have a sales update from Capcom from their financial briefing. That's right. It is the week of financial briefings. And we found out that Monster Hunter Rise has now sold 9 million units. The last update we have is 8.5 million. It's on PC now. So this is really cool. It has an opportunity to potentially crawl its way to 10 million over time. And who knows? There is brand new massive DLC that's almost the size of a game in that of itself in Sunbreak dropping on June 30th, 2022. And that could be a huge boost to sales as well. I think Capcom's relying on it to be a boost as well. A majority of Monster Hunter Rise sales did happen on uh, Switch. So they know where a majority of the audience is for this game. This is really, really good. This obviously has pushed Monster Hunter as a franchise over 80 million lifetime to date. This is one of the most popular uh, Monster Hunter games ever released. Uh, not quite at Monster Hunter World levels, but dancing with those numbers. So, man, good on Capcom. Obviously, good on Switch owners for really enjoying this game and obviously reminding Capcom that, hey, we have a really big, strong core audience of Monster Hunter fans right here on Nintendo Switch. So hopefully this leads to more Monster Hunter games coming down the line. Our last uh, bit of news today deals with something that we talked about before where it felt like Nintendo uh, was really having a problem with two particular games, Genshin Impact and Fall Guys, and that these games might not be coming to Switch. Something weird is going on. And you know what's funny about that video? It's almost as if we called out the companies and then out of the woodworks, those companies come to speak. First, we heard from the developers behind Genshin Impact who reconfirmed the Nintendo Switch version is still in the works. That's it, though. That's all they really said. Uh, but hey, they... It, it be, in wake of those reports and those speculation, they go, look, we're still making the game. But Fall Guys, we didn't hear anything from until today. They are doing a big presentation on May 16th, and Nintendo of America retweeted it. And you know what that means? We will be actually live streaming, reacting to that as well. Again, the events are just hitting us out of left and right and up and down and coming from everywhere. But Nintendo of America retweeted their event you know that means it's probably going to contain the announcement for Nintendo Switch with a release date, maybe even a shadow drop the same day. We'll see. Uh, so this is going to be really big. So hey, you know, you can get upset about that video speculating on Genshin Impact and Fall Guys, or you can say, hey, because of all that speculation, we're now hearing about it. So woo, let's go. I'm really, really happy about this. By the way, I don't, I don't actually take any credit. I think these companies were doing these events anyways. But uh, hey, I, I actually am really excited about this. I know Fall Guys, you know, isn't as big as it once won. Like the heyday of Fall Guys feels like it was a couple years ago. But it could see a resurgence on Switch because Switch does have a massive audience of indie purchasers. And Fall Guys is going to be heavily promoted both by Nintendo and on the eShop. I think it's going to be a featured game. And yeah, I think Fall Guys is actually going to perform very well on switch as long as they price it correctly uh you know they start asking like 20 bucks okay now you're being a bit greedy i think it's going to tank your game you go five or less i think that's that's the sweet spot for fall guys so here we go here's hoping that, that we get some big announcements for switch on may 16th and may 17th i want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to prime news here at nintendo prime hopefully this was an informative episode you learned a lot of stuff we recapped all the big stories for you today and woo! Let's look forward to our next video, which includes a Nintendo Prime podcast tonight. So I hope to catch you guys live at the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight, roughly around 8, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next episode.